We are ready to go on a Monday night. Welcome in to Red Raider Baseball with head coach Tim Tadlock. I'm Jeff Haxton. The coach is with me, and we're presented by Rudy's Barbecue on the South Loop and Slide, where they've got all kinds of great things that you can partake with the ribs, the sausage, out of the park sauces. You get the bread and all the trimmings and all the sides at Rudy's. Actually, had a chance to stop by the Norman Rudy's. Felt we give them a little bit of business as a um, few, uh, me and a few others had the. Uh, the sandwiches for a little pregame Sunday after a delay. That was good. And uh, we want you to go by there and check them out. Again, a terrific place, Rudy's. If you want to, you don't have to get out of the car. You can go right through the line. You can go in. The picnic tables are open. And uh, hit up those fountain drinks. And don't forget about the breakfast tacos. The Red Raiders are 33-12 and 12 on the season, 12-9 and nine in the Big 12 Conference. Winners of two straight and 22-4 and four at home, coming home to play the Kansas Jayhawks this weekend. Texas Tech over this previous weekend had to dodge a bunch of weather, but got in all three games, which was a great thing because after a stumble on Friday to the Oklahoma Sooners, 9-8-10, to eight and 10, the Red Raiders outscore Oklahoma 28-4 to four and didn't need nine innings to get it done yesterday at Eldale Mitchell Park. The Red Raiders run rule Oklahoma in seven innings. Got a little close, thought we might have to keep playing, but a pop out there ended the ball game. So Texas Tech in the D1 baseball rankings moves up to five. That's a great spot. The RPI as of today right now is at eight. And again, joining us is the HC, Tim Tadlock, coach. How are you? And, and welcome back to Lubbock. Got back pretty late last night. You bet. Appreciate that, Hacks. And uh, just listening to you, Kind of describe the weekend. I'd like to thank you for the green chili stew from Rudy's. Um, My pleasure. Yesterday, and uh, probably we probably need to send a big thank you out to the National Weather Service guy. I don't know his name, but right there in Norman, and I thought the guy did an outstanding job forecasting yesterday. And uh, I don't think anybody that woke up yesterday in Norman, even at one o'clock um, in the afternoon, you're sitting there going, "How are we going to play baseball?" and uh, he pretty much hit it right right on. He said, hey, the sun's going to come out at 3.30 or 4, and you're going to have a window to play from 4 to 10. And it's the second time that guy's helped us. I mean, it's the same guy that everybody talks to because the National Weather Service is there. and uh, He's good at his job for sure. Man, I was thinking that too. I was thinking, well, you know, we could play two on Saturday and then got the word that it was going to be a little bit later on Sunday. It's hard to argue with those guys. I mean, the thing is – what a maybe a mile from the ballpark and and i heard some of the ou guys saying yeah that's who we talked to is one of the main guys over there who's got his finger on the pulse of all the weather and um it's hard to argue with that it it's really a, is. i tell you it's an impressive uh outfit they have over there i mean they basically have a map of the united states over there on the wall and uh, it's live and uh, but whoever we talked to again they, they talked to the same guy when we we're in austin and he you know, projected that we'd be able to play on Friday and Saturday when it looked like we wouldn't there. And this weekend, everything went, you know, pretty smooth as far as the weather goes, considering. And, uh, I mean, I think going up there, even for the weekend before, um, we were optimistic to get two games in just the way everything was looking. I mean, it usually they forecast rain up there in Oklahoma. You're going to get some solid rain and – um, because their turf, their, their field is all turf. It allowed us definitely to play yesterday. Yeah, good weekend. Uh, started slow again, but, man, I thought you guys really responded. How would you feel about that? Going home with a bad taste in your mouth late Friday, uh, it's a quick turnaround. Your guys did it 15-2. to two. Yeah, I tell you, I mean, Friday's game, I thought there was a lot of value in everything that was presented to us and um, as far as the competition and the challenge of the game with – whatever you want to say with, you know, no rhythm and timing basically for nine or ten days and really just, uh, you know, rough corn being as good as he is and wide olds coming out of the bullpen and being really good and Taggart being really good. Thought there was a lot of value in just the uh, level of pitching we were facing that day and thought it would benefit us down the road. And obviously the game taught us some things that, you know, that, you know, that things that happened in the game definitely uh, – I think that's good for you every now and then, you know, to remind you to, you know, you got to be a pitch ahead, not a pitch behind. And um, thought we were really good at that on Saturday and Sunday and 
thought the guys again con they're continuing to evolve uh, each day and um I thought Friday again just to go back to Friday I thought it was very natural to you know to want to go out and we we jumped out early on them and and then you really just start focusing on the result instead of playing the game and uh that kind of reared its head about there the fourth or fifth inning and uh games do seem longer when you don't play for a while they do as far as like just really the rhythm of the game and yeah. inning to inning and uh, it is a game that rewards you for playing inning to inning and pitch to pitch. And and so uh, I thought, oh, you did a really good job on Friday on both sides of that. And Rough Corn's as good arms you're going to see. I mean, guys, 94 to 97, I guess, with a wipeout slider. And uh, no matter what day of the week it is, you face those kind of arms like we face this weekend. It's going to should help you down the road. Yeah, and it did. Uh, the Red Raiders turned around and went 15-2 to and 13-2 to yesterday in Norman. What did you think about your starting pitching? I um, thought it was good. I, you know, I didn't think any of them had their best stuff um, as far as that goes. Uh, you know, Patrick was just okay on Friday. And, again, we could have minimized the inning. He probably gets through that inning. Uh, but we didn't. And so we didn't help him much there. And, uh, Micah had some traffic, you know, that he probably wouldn't like to have, whether it was a hit or a walk or whatever the case was. And um, But he pitched through it and pitched really well and uh, showed a lot of composure and presence on the mound and uh, thought Mason did the same. Yeah, Mason did that same thing, just kind of navigated it. It seemed like Micah had some issues with leadoff and then was fine. And then Mason had a few issues with two outs but ultimately was fine. Yeah. That's a good hitting team. I mean, we saw, no, them, it is. we saw them parade out this line of seniors. And I'm looking up at our roster. Going, Wait a minute, you know? Yeah, and, there's and, quite a few of them. Yeah, and then, um, you know, they're second in the league in average with the, with the batting. So, uh, to go two runs, two runs given up the next two days, you know, we can pick, I guess, at, at Micah and, and Mason, but really – no need to because well, it ended up getting the job done. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, definitely a collective effort. I mean, I thought Braxton yeah. caught really well on Saturday, Sunday. I thought the guys played really good defense. And I think Patrick could could have been in a really good spot if you play a little bit of defense behind him. Um, it, we just weren't real sharp that evening and uh, for whatever reason. And um, so, as far as that goes, again, really proud of all three of them. They all three competed. They all continued to pitch, and uh, they're not going to be perfect each time out. And, um, you know, it's, uh, again, each time they get to go out there, there's a chance to get a little bit better. You know, I think about that 2017 team, and we had a little bit of, yeah, you know, you're up. And so, we started branching off on various conversations and started talking about what it looked like in 2018, comparing – Jace Young and his 18 home runs to other, you know, journeys like uh, Zach Reams. We got into Zach Reams and we got into, of course, Josh and, and other players. Went back to 2017, that team had a total of 60 home runs. I think you're around 75 or 76. It, it, that might not be the exact number. I'll look it up in a minute. Um, you, you, I mean, what are you thinking when it's just – Kind of home run derby for your guys. And yesterday, no win. Well, you, you said a few things as far as that goes. Zach Reams, is, it's an interesting deal because he didn't get in there till game 18 or 19, I want to say. We were in Waco. Started 43 and, games. Uh, he started 43 games. And uh, I was thinking of that when I saw the deal about Cam and Jace today. And I think Cam probably hit that over um, nearly 65 games yes. probably. Yes. And we're somewhere around 45 games right now, 46, something like I think. that. And um, Jace has had a really good year. I mean, both those guys, I'm I'm sure they would tell you, you know, that bats before them, guys have been setting up things for them. And both have really evolved into uh, being really good hitters. Jace is still evolving as far as that goes. And um, as far as the weekend, as far as playing the four games against Oklahoma and uh, how many home runs we hit and the wind not blowing yesterday. I mean, I've seen a lot of games in Norman, and uh, most of the time the ball goes out of the ballpark to left very easy. And uh, 
probably plays as hot as any ballpark in the country to left field uh, and even left center at times. Uh, but to center and right, um, our guys made it look really small. And uh, some guys put some really good swings on some pitches. I think it's a combination of, to me, really good arms and really good fastballs. And them really, our guys making an effort to, to stay short to the baseball and really them supplying the power instead of us having to supply it. Interesting, yeah. Um, Jace Young with 18 home runs, your team total is 76. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's just, it's something else. Did you think when you recruited Braxton Fulford that he would have the ability to go deep 13 times in a year and we're not done yet? I don't know that we were evaluating that at that time. I tell you, I mean, we did think he could really hit. And, uh, you know, he's always been able to put, you know, put the barrel to the baseball. And uh, and so, again, Braxton's really diligent and really works really hard at it. And uh, anything he does really hasn't surprised me too much. I mean, you start talking about the classroom with the kid and you go, I'm not sure he's made a B. Special. And, you know, kids that are, you know, you know what you're getting on the field and off the field, on the field and off the field. Uh, you know, it's just really unique, and it's a, it's a lot of fun to be around them, and we're fortunate to coach guys like that. I mean, he's – again, I don't think he's in school right now. If the draft's any different last year, I think he'd have had a really tough decision to make. And, uh, guy, he's been fun to watch. Uh, by the way, Toby Rowland, the voice of Oklahoma, popped his head in our booth after Jace Young went over the batter's eye. And he said, I've been calling games here. He's attended a bunch of games there. Yeah. Been calling games there for 10 years and said he'd never seen that. Well, have you 10 seen years? It? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 There's, yeah, there's a few of them. A few of them. Okay. Yeah, Aaron Baker and Max White. And Boy, it sounded Matt good. Matt and... From our end, it sounded yeah, good. Yeah, I tell you, I mean, there's, uh, yeah, I mean, we were talking about it to our guys. I mean, our team in 09 there was, was pretty special. And then the 010 team went to Omaha. Yeah. And, Really, it's uh, – yeah, those teams could really hit. Yeah, I remember. I remember battling with those guys up the road, nowhere are you, trying to try to knock yeah. off the Sooners here and there and had a regional in Norman with ORU. We'll come back with head coach Tim Tadlock, continue our conversation. We've got a bunch more coming up. This is Red Raider Baseball presented by Rudy's. Red Raider Baseball with Tim Tadlock continues after this on the Tech Sports Network from Learfield IG College. Texas Tech, innovation is at our core. Grit and determination drive our ambition. Art and culture spur our creativity. We're a community that makes Texas and the world a better place. We're a university where our accomplishments are many, our achievements are global, and our victories are glorious. Texas Tech University, from here, it's possible. Baseball with head coach Tim Tadlock. One more show to finish out for the year. That means we're getting close. And that means we've got three games left in the regular season. Coach, coming up this weekend, a few schedule changes. Might as well get that out there for the people. Um, instead of a later start on Friday, it's now 2 o'clock. And a little bit earlier for Saturday noon. Do I have that correct? Um, first of all, the first game of the series is on Thursday. Thursday. 6.30. I think game two is at 2 o'clock on Friday. And then their travel got moved up. Their flight got moved up on Saturday. So we had to move the game time up to noon on Saturday. Okay. That's uh, coming up this weekend. 6.30 Thursday to Friday and noon on Saturday. Uh, one guy that I want to make sure we talk about is a guy that seemed to be ready when his name was called, and that's Max Marshock. Max Jumped right in there when he got the call, had a lefty on the mound Saturday. And what would you think of Max and his uh, his appearance over the weekend? Yeah, I've been really proud of Max over the last, you know, couple months. He's uh, really been working hard and uh, gotten a lot of live at-bats over the last two or three weeks. And he's been swinging the bat really good. Almost had him in there game one. And uh, really just the matchup with Masters, you think, okay, hey, Masters, if he gives you one – one shot and uh if he gives you one swing and 
he does some damage and sure enough in the first inning we all kind of turned and looked at each other well sure enough he did some damage on the one swing and uh and then going into uh saturday's game just thought max could bring some energy to the lineup he's a guy that if he gets on base he's gonna score based on he you know he just runs so well he's always run the bases good and uh again just felt like he was in a really good spot to to help the team that day what do you think's allowed cole stillwell to blossom this guy has given you some real punch at least now this has all been against ou where he's kind of gone crazy uh we'll hope he continues that route but man it's fun watching him hit right now yeah i think he's just really in a good rhythm and uh, i think he's doing you know he's made a few adjustments definitely and uh he's getting good pitches to hit and he's hitting the pitches when he's getting good pitches to hit and he's not missing them um Kurt Wilson, any chance we see him swing a bat, or is he strictly with the arm, do you think, down the stretch? Is there any way to know? Oh, I think he wants to, absolutely. I think last week it would have been too soon just in case he got jammed or something like that. It could have probably stung the the thumb a little bit. And But Kurt's talking about it. He wants to do it. Matter of fact, he was talking before the weekend. He wanted to do it today. It's like, hey, let's start doing it on Monday. And what do you mean, just like start to take cuts? Yeah, with the ball moving. Okay. And not just off a tee or maybe somebody front tossing. And we're going to wait till he's 100%. They said he was uh, – it's got 15 more percent maybe to heal. And we're, we'll, we'll wait till they clear him 100%. And when, once they do, um, I tell you, I mean, he, he'll be right in the mix. And uh, he's a guy, once they do, I mean – we saw it, what, three years ago? I mean, he hadn't picked a bat up in a while and jumps in there and basically helps us win a midweek game and stayed in there the rest of the year. And the famous, uh, you know, if it wasn't for Rudy's, we, we don't know what uh, Kurt Wilson's history would look like because he asked that question that day. There you go. When am I going to get some – when is when is Kurt Wilson going to get some cuts? That is um, – if there's a Hall of Fame for Rudy's and the Tim <laughs> Tadlock Show, that is in the Hall of Fame. There you go. Absolutely. Yep. Um, be surprised how many of those pitchers ask that daily. How many do? Yeah, quite a few. Quite a them. few. Yeah, a lot of them <laughs> think they can hit. Who thinks they can hit? Yeah. That's what I want to know. Who thinks they can hit out of that bunch? Yeah. I mean, it's. Oh, uh, you don't have to throw anybody yeah, under the bus. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> uh, Cody Masters, you ever have anybody like him? 15 hits, 12 of them are extra bases. That's hard to define. Where when he steps up, if he gets it, it's going to be a two-bagger, three-bagger home run. It is. I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, he. I mean, obviously, if you're, you know, I think there's more to those numbers than what you just said. I mean, if you go to the strikeouts, you go, okay, hey, if there's more contact here and there's more balls on the ground, then we got more hits because yeah. he can really run. And so, um, I mean, he's probably, you know, he's probably a guy that uh, obviously um, needs to. Uh, control the strike zone a little more at times and needs to be shorter the ball at times at the same time you we all really love his competitiveness and what he brings to our lineup because of what you just said and uh, we'll live with the strikeouts as far as that goes as, as long as you know ball's still going out of the ballpark how good has parker kelly been at third base this year um just kind of give me your overall thoughts on him over there. I thought it was a, a really good sign that I think he was 0 for 11, but threw in some walks in there, and then he just stung that one, turned it over into the gap and left center field. That shows that his approach didn't didn't waver. You know, 0 for 11, sometimes you just, can, you just roll through the weekend and it's 0 for 14. But he stung that one to left center field. But go back to the defensive side. How good has he been there? Um. I'd say this. I mean, there was a time in Saturday's game where they might have had him 0-2 or 1-2, and he ended up having a 7 or 8 or 9 pitch at bat and ended up walking and ended up being – Baker ends up singling in maybe a couple runs, something along those lines. Then you got the grand slam after it. There you go. I thought that was a huge at bat. And he's doing a good job of moving on the right pitch, and uh, really that's what we try to base our success on most of the time. And, uh, you know, he's he really I think he's been quite a bit better at controlling the zone the last couple of weeks than he was maybe three weeks ago. 
and that's just picking a time frame without really looking at it. Defensively, um, I mean, Parker's always been able to play defense. He's played good defense. Um, he made two really good plays yesterday. Um, I think both of them against Zaragoza. Uh, maybe three really good plays now I think about it. And, uh, I mean, he's a guy that's got some length. Uh, he reads the ball off the bat really good. Um, tell you, he's uh, yeah, he's a guy that's hard to take off that corner because of the way he can defend. There's two guys that I have a question about, and it's Nate Brombach and Andrew Devine. Those guys in 2020 had unbelievable numbers. Mm -hmm. This year, struggles. Why? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I think you – I don't know that we know the answer to that. Maybe they wouldn't be struggling right now. And uh, confidence possibly. Um, <clears throat> I thought Andrew Devine uh, obviously – it, and I don't look at the numbers possibly as much as you do. Um, I look at them a bunch. Andrew, um, I think, you know, he could have lost some confidence in game one of the year. And, man, he's facing a – comes in to close a game against Arkansas, facing a fifth-year senior. Uh, catchers come up with a lot of big hits. The guy rattles one out there and ends up – you know, I think that's probably a confidence thing. I think he's – his confidence is – right back to where it needs to be right now. Uh, and I think Nate, you know, Nate's a guy that, uh, you know, has had plenty of opportunity. And uh, really right now to me it's a deal where he just needs the opportunity. And the problem is, is Braxton's catching at such a high level and uh, Stillwell's done the same and then Masters has swung the bat really good. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm going to come back and uh, throw a little bit of graduation fun your way because some okay. of that was happening over the weekend and we'll uh we'll get into some more we got kansas to talk about big 12 race to talk about oklahoma city to talk about because this is the last show we're coming down the stretch and back with coach tadlock after this on the texas tech sports network from learfield img college Texas Tech, innovation is at our core. Grit and determination drive our ambition. Art and culture spur our creativity. We're a community that makes Texas and the world a better place. We're a university where our accomplishments are many, our achievements are global, and our victories are glorious. Texas Tech University, from here, it's possible. We are back with the head coach, Tim Tadlock, on Red Raider Baseball with Coach Tim Tadlock. And we are presented by Rudy's, where they've got everything ready. Weather might be bad tonight, doesn't matter. Just go get it, take it home, hunker down, you'll be great. 33-12 and 12 for the Red Raiders, 12-9 and nine in conference play with three more games coming up with the Kansas Jayhawks. We'll preview them in a little bit. Has this season gone by fast? Because, again, you know, I start, always open up the schedule and see <clears> – <throat> February 20, college baseball showdown. I remember not being able to go to that because of basketball, and boom, here we are, one more regular season series. It definitely has gone by fast. We've we've talked about it quite a bit, and, and I think it's because all of us weren't doing much as, at this time last year. and All of a sudden, everything went back to normal, which is a blessing for all of us. Big and, time. Uh, you know, we're getting to do what we love to do, and, it's been pretty normal for us uh, the whole spring, knock on wood, and uh, yes, it's gone fast. Braxton Fulford, Parker Kelly, Connor Queen, Cody Masters, Jacob Rostowski all graduate over the weekend. Congratulations to them. And I just got, I got to talk about Cam Warren again. He just finds his way back into conversation. He took his master's pictures at Rip Griffin Ballpark at the yard at the law and the, the the caption said they told me one hat size fits all he said that was a lie i just thought it was hilarious that yeah. that hat little hat sitting up on that big head yeah uh, but he's got two degrees from tech coach i tell you what really proud of cam he's gonna do really really well in whatever he chooses to do and uh it's just so fun having him around as it is all of our former players and 
Cam's been around quite a bit this year and helped you guys call some games and uh, just been around the ballpark and around the team. Uh, he's just he's so infectious, everything he does. He's always smiling and uh, did an awful lot for our program while he's here. You know, with basketball, it's called rotation. What's your rotation? How many's in the rotation? You know, at the start of the year, you could have 12 guys in your rotation. But I remember that Final Four team, it got down to the nitty-gritty. It was about six and a half. It shrunk down to seven. Over under, how many guys you think have made pitches in games for the Red Raiders this year? Um, you mean total? Total individuals that have taken at least one pitch. 18. 22. There you go. Do you have a number in mind of guys that, hey, this is who we can rely on as far as that when you hit tournament time? Um, you don't if have to we've used that. 22, I'm going to say 22. 22, we, we every had, one we, of them. We only were allowed, we took 17 on the trip to Norman with us. Um, to the Big 12 tournament, we'll take 17 because um, we've got 13 position players. And, uh, you know, postseason after that, you'll have to knock three more off. And so it'll be down to 14. Uh, but if, if they're in uniform, we, we think we can count on them. Does those do those travel rules change at all when you go into into regional supers in Omaha? Like you know, you can't take Dylan Noisy right now, right? I mean, that was one of the things. Dylan yeah. kind of showed up on his yeah. own down there to root you on we, in Austin. We can actually take guys to the Big Twelve tournament. They are not allowed to be in the dugout. The problem is, is uh, right now they're still very strict in Oklahoma City around the tur tournament based on pandemic and COVID and everything and. Uh, right now, they're not allowing guys to go to games other than our games. And so, guys would pretty much be locked in a hotel. Seriously? Yeah. And so. Um, they can't roll out for. That we were told that last week. Now, I'm oh. not sure it's going to stick with it. but And so, we I actually have already visited with Birdsell and Dobbins. And we were going to take those guys. And really, I, I can't see taking them, you know, if they're just sitting in the hotel. What are the chances, I had this question earlier today, on the guys that were injured pitchers coming back? So we're talking about Dobbins, Prostowski, Becker, Birdsell. Do you have any idea, any thoughts on them and their, I guess, immediate future with what they're dealing with injury-wise? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's all those guys are in a different spot as far as when they'll start throwing. They'll all be available and all be healthy by next spring. Um, obviously, out of those guys, all of them have some uh, aspirations, you know, for pro baseball, if the right opportunities there for them. So there's some things to uh, go through through the summer and try to figure out what's best for them um, through that process. And uh, we'll do that. And, uh, you know, we obviously will welcome all of them back and look forward to them being back. Yeah, the baseball is kind of cruel in that way. I was thinking about that this morning about bird cell and, you know, I got to interview him a bunch because he's a pitcher. And, you know, the next day you get to go interview him. Just had so much fun just talking to him there. And he's such a big part of things. And now it's just like, you know, you move along and he doesn't get to pitch anymore. You yeah. just kind of forget. That yeah. sucks. Yeah. And the part you mentioned about the travel deal is the hardest thing about our sport. I mean, it's uh, it, it really is tough when, I mean, those guys go from um, – being with you, everything you're doing every day, uh, whether it's practice, whether it's travel, whether it's a game, to all of a sudden, then you got, then we basically are forced to leave them home uh, for the most part. I mean, for a Big 12 weekend, you can't take them. And so, um, believe me, I think we got, we asked twice. We asked that question twice. And both times, you know, and, oh, it hadn't changed, Coach. And we just, you know, it's just, uh, It'd be nice if you could take your whole roster from a standpoint of being around them and supporting them and them being around their friends and their teammates and supporting their teammates. And so it is, it's tough on them. Um, but I'll say this about all those guys, they've all been um, very responsible about their, you know, about their injuries and as far as their schoolwork and uh, they've done a good job off the field for the most part. One thing that I want to get to before we hit this last break with you is um, I believe at one point 
you had 25 of 29 runs with two outs. And I think you ended up getting more runs with zero and one outs. Are you talking about this weekend? This weekend, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just real quickly back to, to Oklahoma before we look at Kansas. Um, how does that make you feel? I mean, that's that's big time. We get 25 of 29 runs with two outs. You got some clutch genes going on there now. That was good. Guys got some ice water in their veins, yeah. I guess. Huh? That's good. That, and balls are finding holes. That's even better. That, it, it doesn't seem like something you even talk about in baseball, does it? Hitting with two outs? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of just, I mean, like you, it's not always going to be there. It's just not. I mean, mm -hmm. there's going to be days where you hit it hard and it goes to them, right? Yeah. And so. Oh, you had some of that yesterday? But cool. Yeah, obviously, yeah. I mean, we've got some <laughs> guys like to hit. And, I mean, guys are doing a good job. Again, it's uh, our lineup. It's continuing to get a little bit better each day. And they um, they work at it. Um and and they grasp, you know, you got to work some counts, you got to get deep in a count, and you got to finish some at bats, and uh, try to move on the right pitch and compete through that bat, and all those things you talk about, and you can talk about it till you're blue in the face, um, but you know they got to go out and do it, and it's it's fun when they when it does work out that way. You're almost done talking. Okay. Almost. No, I'm we good. Got, we I'm got good. one, one more good. segment I'm with good. Coach Tim Tadlock. We've had a blast doing this. We can't wait to get back in Rudy's. That's the most fun that we have is interacting with our fan base and getting to chat with them during the breaks. Coach can get his iced tea and yeah. maybe some, some green chili stew and all those things. And we look forward to that being a part of what we get to do next year. But for this year, we've got one more segment coming up with Coach Tim Tadlock right after this on the Texas Tech Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. At Texas Tech, innovation is at our core. Grit and determination drive our ambition. Art and culture spur our creativity. We're a community that makes Texas and the world a better place. We're a university where our accomplishments are many, our achievements are global, and our victories are glorious. Texas Tech University. From here, it's possible. <clears throat> Back here one more time with head coach Tim Tadlock as the Red Raiders get geared up for KU. Again, 6.30 Thursday, 2 o'clock on Friday, noon on Saturday, and then we'll focus on the Big 12 tournament. And um, did, you, uh, did you get any hail or any bad weather on the bus ride? We sure did. We sure did. I don't, I don't know if we were around uh, Benjamin or Dickens, but somewhere in there we got some good hail. It's an interesting drive, period, but uh, – when the weather's bearing down on you, uh, a little bit different and a little bit uh, interesting. That's quite a light show last night. It was. It was fun to watch for sure. and A little more relaxing when you're not the one driving the bus. Yeah, you just kind of. Like, yeah, yeah, just hang out. and Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing sometimes when you get home, you're like, man, I shouldn't. we shouldn't be the ones that are tired. Tony should be. Yeah, yeah. Are you still taking two buses? We are. Okay. We are. That's probably going to continue through and. I think, I mean, out of these COVID things, what do you think sticks? I mean, you think you always take two buses from now on or do you get back on one? Oh, I would think we'd get back on one for yeah. sure. I wouldn't think that would stick. I don't want Guys to, might get used to it, but I don't, I, I don't I want much so. to stick. From yeah, I don't think any of us do. Yeah, let's not let's not do that. Uh, well, let's for sure, though, look at Kansas, a team that won its series – against Kansas State over the weekend. Took two of three from the Wildcats and had a seven-inning no-no. They did a doubleheader on Friday and then one game on Saturday. Uh, Coach Kansas 28-23, and 10-12 and 12 away from Lawrence and 7-13 and 13 in the Big 12. I think that puts them tied with West Virginia. What do you know about the Jayhawks? What do you think? Uh, you know, I hadn't really looked at it. I mean, obviously, we follow the whole league as we go through the year. And uh, the Davis kid that threw the no-hitters, a little left-hander, can really pitch. They've got a lot of guys uh, back on the mound. Looks like to me they've got a good group of arms. Um, 
you know, Coach Price, Coach Graves, uh, and Coach Price's son there, I mean, they've always done a good job on both sides of it and always competitive. And, um, you know, it's uh, – they'll be a good team. The guys that you're probably going to see as starters for Kansas, Coach already mentioned one of them in Eli Davis. He's six and five on the year. Cole Larson is five and five. And Ryan Sear, we know that name, he is four and seven. Those are the guys that have started most of the games. They have a, a couple other guys that have started. We'll wait and see on that later on in the week. Skyler Messenger is number one in batting average, 317, 60 base hits. And uh, they've got some guys with some decent numbers. It, it, it's one of those deals where, again, I think we've talked about it a lot in the Big 12. You're going to have to play well. Yeah. Yeah, they don't give you any of them. This league top to bottom, you can see Kansas go and do what they did. Oklahoma had won two of three series leading up to the series that you played. Uh, OUN, they had knocked off Oklahoma State and at West Virginia. So you better be ready. And, again, that's coming up this weekend. Big 12 tournament, if it started today, you know who you'd play? No, if it started today, I think it would be Oklahoma. You're right. Might get to see the Sooners again in OKC for the last round. But, Coach, you get your wish, you'll be on natural grass. Yeah, it, it looks like Oklahoma, K-State, or Baylor, just kind of how everything, how the weekend plays out. And um, I need to quit tapping on that chair. Sorry about that. I was bugging you can you tap actually. all you want. No, I don't need to do you that. You see this right here? I didn't. This is you. You can yeah, do whatever you want. I, yeah, but I was looking at my – I didn't realize I was doing that. And, uh, <laughs> no, it's uh, – I tell you, it's – we're looking forward to the weekend. Again, these, these Big 12 games definitely – um, there's a lot of value in in the competition in these games, and and we don't none of us really know how postseason is going to pan out as far as the number of teams in our league, but you can look at one through nine, and you can see that this year's been really tough on everybody, and that everybody's beat up on each other, and uh, I think you could make a really good argument for six or seven teams really really easy within our league now that's without looking at numbers as far as that goes as far as wins losses all those things that's looking to me like each year within the big 12 for nine teams it's just a competitive league with really good pitching and good arms good coaches and i mean it'd be really cool if uh you, know, you, you could start getting in six or seven teams again yeah, we'll see about that coming up real soon. All right, so we're, we're going to wrap up with a few jinx stories. I told you my best jinxing story when it comes to baseball, all right? As so, in jinx. As yeah, in I, jinx. I was the jinxer. I had a cat named Jinx. You did? Yeah. Black How'd one. that go over? Black one. I didn't mind him. Kind of liked him. I'd tell Jinx to hit the road, man. Nah, bad luck. He's, he lived outside. A black and, cat goes in front of your truck. He Is was harmless. Doesn't bother me. Like I said, I had one that was black. All right, walking under a ladder. I mean, we could let one sit on my lap for all I care. Oh, you're crazy. I mean, That's bad I luck. I mean, it's pretty. Pretty cat? Yeah. It's... Did I tell you about the time Jamie Lent got on to me for closing his umbrella? Matter of fact, in our neighborhood, there's a cat that walks in front of my truck all the time. And you're good with it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll make sure I don't hit him. Okay. How about Jamie got mad at me for closing his umbrella? He brought the umbrella in the Mon County ballpark up there in West Virginia, wide open inside. So, bad luck, man. Close the my close grandma, the umbrella. My grandma always says, "Bad luck be superstitious." Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. Think about that one. <laughs> you Cla had to explain class. that one to me in a that break in like 2017. So at 14 years old, I I jinxed a no hitter on my own team. Yep. Is that sorry? Can you for can you forgive something like that? Because I was so young. I mean, I, I again, and then I'm like, okay, you've been playing this game for nine years already. You probably should know. But well, is that forgivable? Well, well, what you need to do is you need to go back and interview all the guys that ever threw a no-hitter and see what was said in the dugout. Because I guarantee there's somebody who's confident enough and uh, felt good enough about it. Like, I could think of, like, Don Marino when he was here. Like, he would have probably said, hey, y'all, go ahead and talk about it all you want. I'm going to make pitches regardless. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he just had that certain swagger guy about him. It'd be fun. I don't even know how many no-hitters have been thrown in the history of Major League Baseball. Do you? No. 
it'd be interesting to see and just I think that ought to be a project for you. Oh, yeah. And Find you go those and that teammates. way that way those teammates when you're fourteen when you're in high school could forgive you. That's a bestseller right there. Go ahead. Thanks for that. Get I, after it. I appreciate it. There you go. Um, again, the Red Raiders coming up with Kansas, and um, that will be Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And are you still going to travel on Monday to Oklahoma City? Hey, you could just start with Nolan Ryan. Well, that would be the Seven. place to start. Yeah, yeah, just start with him and just interview his teammates. Okay, can you get them together for me? Nah, I probably can't. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't know what you asked me before that. I had that. That's okay. Are you still traveling to Oklahoma City Monday? We are. Okay. We are. All right. Practice days Tuesday. And then they got a game Tuesday night. But you can't go to it. Play in game on Tuesday night. That's right. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. We've heard a lot of crazy things. Coach, appreciate your time, man. Okay, you bet. And uh, we'll see you over there. You bet. Enjoy it, Hex. At the rip on sounds good thursday you bet that's tim tadlock again thursday friday and saturday when we come back we'll remind you of those friday and saturday time changes and we'll get you on to the next spot this is a red raider baseball with head coach tim tadlock on the texas textbooks network from learfield img college at texas tech innovation is at our core Grit and determination drive our ambition. Art and culture spur our creativity. We're a community that makes Texas and the world a better place. We're a university where our accomplishments are many, our achievements are global, and our victories are glorious. Texas Tech University, from here, it's possible. And we are back one more time here to wrap things up. Our final show of the 2021 Red Raider baseball season. The great thing is baseball goes on. More great things. The Red Raiders have been selected as one of the 20 possible sites for a regional. And when you open up today and you see the rankings with Texas Tech at fifth in the D1 baseball uh, poll and eighth in the RPI, those are great things. Texas Tech is 33-12, and 12-9 and in the conference. Go have a good showing against Kansas in the Big 12. You've got a really good shot of not only being a regional host, but being a super regional host as well, which, of course, that is the goal. Thanks to Blake Silverthorne with this information as he gets this in. Through May 7, 2021, there have been 309 no-hitters officially recognized by Major League Baseball. The first 43 in the pre-modern era, and then you get to the foundation of the American League in 1901. Since then, 266 no-hitters in the modern era. Now the question is, who was the guy that jinxed it like I did back in those days? There's always somebody that, uh, like me, back in 1993 that gets in the way. Big thanks to Michael Tackett, our producer-engineer. Also thanks to everybody here uh, that takes part in these uh, shows at United Supermarkets Arena. For Tim Tadlock, I'm Jeff Haxton. Join us Thursday at 6.30 as we take on the Kansas Jayhawks. And you can listen to it right here on the Texas Tech Sports Network from Learfield IMG College.